Hello everyone, welcome to lecture three. So in this uh, video, we're going to talk about uh, two key terms, one is risk and uh, one is return. So let's dive in. So what we really want to maximize is the risk of the investment assets. Right. Um, it really depends on a lot of things. For example, the tolerance profile, uh, our years of retirements, and the potential to replace their lost funds. So depending on our risk appetite, we would choose different products, and different products would give us give us uh, different returns. Now, of course, um, the higher the return, usually it comes with a higher risk. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, there are different types of traders, depending on how long the trading horizon is. So we have position traders who enter into a position, usually in a long position, hoping that the price of the assets will increase in the long term. It could be years, it could be even uh, 10 years, 20 years. Um, so usually they hope, the, they hope that the price of the assets will increase. Now, another type of uh, traders, which is uh, more, uh, which trades more frequent, more frequently is the swing traders or even day traders, right? So they look at uh, more about timing the market. So uh, seeking profits that's, uh, that are mostly short term by speculating on the movement of the price changes. <clears throat> so we draw here the uh, two-dimensional coordinate system where we have the risk. Usually we put it on the x-axis and return on the y-axis. And we have four quadrants. So um, the first, uh, the, the, uh, this quadrant has higher risk and higher return. Uh, example could include stocks and derivatives. So stocks is a bit special because we hope that's the, so we buy st stocks mostly, uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, incomes for stocks. One is uh, we have the appreciation, the price, so stock price increases, then we gain benefits. Uh, the other type is dividends. However, dividends is not the main uh, source of income we are hoping for, right? So hoping for a high return because usually the dividends from stocks are uh, much less than the and the fixed income uh, products. So they have low risk, a low return, but the return is, is uh, guaranteed, although it's not as high as the stocks. Uh, what's more risky is uh, often the derivatives, which we can use to uh, either hedge or speculate. Um, if we have a product that has low risk, but high return, this is uh, uh, not impossible, but uh, less frequent to see in the market. Um, unless uh, some company are in uh, urgent need of cash, then they may uh, push the return up a bit, right? So still have low risk. But in the meantime, uh, if the company is in the urgent need of cash, then it also in means that the risk is, uh, is increased in terms of uh, counterpart risk or default risk, right? Um, we have the this quadrants, which we have high risk but low return. So this is even more likely. Right? So if that's a case that you would actually choose the prefer the products on the this quadrant because it gives you the, the low risk for the same return. So let's uh, look at the return. So return is really about um, mostly about percentage terms. Right. So otherwise, it would be difficult to compare. Uh, asset A versus asset B. So when we calculate the uh, return, we would take the uh, price at the current time period and then price at the last time period. This is the difference. This is measures um, how much we deviate from the last period uh, as a price divided. So this is like a normalizing a, a denominator. So that's this whole term is converted to a percentage, right? So then we just use this percentage to compare different assets. Now, this percentage is really unbounded, meaning that it can go from negative infinity to positive infinity because uh, there's no restriction on the asset price, right? So this can be really a, 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 a living in the right, wide range. 
Uh, let's look at uh, one example in terms of uh, two assets. Now, these two assets are having the same return. So how do I know that? Uh, because here, uh, this is this uh, graph gives the percentage return at each period. So first, uh, uh, first period, uh, the first return, the first asset is having about five percent. Now the the second asset is about fifty percent in terms of return, and it uh, changes across time. So obviously, asset one is less volatile than asset two, right? So they are having the same average return. So if you average all these returns plus uh, uh, meaning the uh, add together and then divide by five, just take the arithmetic mean. Now they are the same, but asset Y is uh, definitely less volatile. So asset two is more volatile in terms of the um, the extremes. Now let's look at the same graph uh, from a different angle, which is that assume we have $100, right? Uh, invested in both uh, assets. And uh, we see how this $100 grows um, across different periods. So this is actually period one, we should have the, the period zero, which we have the uh, $100. Now you see that um, because for assets two, the first period is 50% and our money grows to 50% uh, by 50%, which is uh, now 150. So this is well, uh, asset two uh, lends us so we are here, but as I went up here. So this graph shows uh, the, the so-called wealth process, right? Wealth process. So how much is our wealth uh, across time? And you see that interestingly, the S1 gives us a, a, a higher terminal return. Right? So at the end, we actually end up with uh, uh, more money in, in our pockets than S2. Although S2 looks to be more volatile and thus more risk, right? So this means that it does not mean that same type of uh, same return, same average return, uh, not necessarily the how the, the risk, the better. Okay, so now there's one common format which we call the one plus R format when calculation returns. So if you cut here, and this is how we ca calculate return uh, uh, from earlier, right? So now there are really two steps involved. First, we take the difference, then we divide by the previous period. So these are two steps, and we need to do this for every uh, uh, two two consecutive uh, price points. So this really uh, is something uh, more cumbersome to implement. However, if we implement some, if we make some changes to this uh, equation, and then uh, specifically we can um, we can move this uh, this term outside, and then it's going to be one, and then one moves here. So this is called the one plus r format, or and one plus r formatted return, right? And this is the the key change here. So now we just need to divide the current price by the previous price, so that we can have the uh, one plus r return right and then uh, and then we can easily get this uh, original return by moving this one uh, to the right so here's an example this is our original price table so each time we'll have one price point now we just need to get the corresponding uh, next period price by shifting price upwards so s1 shifting upwards to get s uh, uh, to to get, to live in the same row as S zero, right? So have S zero, S one, and S one, S two, the corresponding uh, price for the next period, and then we just need to divide this column by this column to get the one one plus R return. So this is our one plus R return, and we do this for all the all the periods, all the rows in one shot. So this is much more uh, much easier than. Uh, then if we were to calculate this manually for all the price points. And uh, the one plus of formats is actually also helping us to calculate the cumulative term uh, or the terminal return much more easily as we will see. <clears throat> okay, so 
this is how we calculate the terminal return. Right? So we take the terminal price of the asset divided by the original price. Right. So and then we look at um what is the total percentage return. Then we minus one to offset uh, the the original price, and then this gives us our percentage return. Right? So in terms of how much uh, increase or decrease in in asset price in percentage terms. Now this uh, th this quantity can also be calculated by viewing the uh, wealth process as a as a sequential process, right? So what do I mean by that? Um, so for example, for the first period, our percentage increment is one plus R01, uh, right? This is, uh, for example, it's 10%, then the first period, our asset increased price by 10%. And based on this, we'll look at the second period. So this is called compounding because we need to multiply. And, uh, uh, and so once we multiply this term, this means that this is our wealth at period one. Now, moving from period one to period two, we also need to multiply the corresponding percentage returns. And then we'll do this for all the uh, periods until the last period. So this gives our percentage return in, in, in terms of one plus R format, right? Scale one plus R. Then we minus one to switch to the, uh, the original return. So this is how we can get the same return, but using different calculations. And you see that all this uh, middle Surprisingly, they just uh, cancel out with each, with each other, and then it's the same as if we were to calculate in, in this one. So these are different ways to calculate, but uh, this is really the key. So this uh, tells us it's, it's actually a sequential process uh, moving from period to period. <clears throat> okay, so um, the previous return we looked at is called the price return. We just look at the price to calculate the return. Now, uh, as we mentioned, stocks usually provide dividends. Now, uh, most of the time, dividends also need to come into the equation by adding on top of, uh, adding in, in the nominator. Uh, so that's uh, uh, when we calculate the return, we add the dividends as well. Right. So this is uh, just a small change in the equation, but usually we would include the dividends as well. Uh, to calculate the so-called total return. Okay, so this graph uh, provides more details on the sequential process, which I call the multi-period return. So we have price from a uh, current period, next period, and then next period. Okay. And then uh, based on our previous approach, we, would, uh, we can calculate the percentage return from this period to this period. Uh, so basically, we have two inputs, right? So current, uh, previous period and current period to calculate the return for current period. And we do this for this as well. Um, however, if you want to look at the return from period T to T plus two, then we'll take these two guys as our input and then uh, divide each other, right? So this is how we would calculate. So the cumulative two period return can also be calculated using the one plus format uh, using this approach. So we would move from T to T plus one by multiplying this term, which is still one plus R format. And then there's another movement, which is one plus R format. And then uh, this is compounding. So we compound to get the two period return in one plus R format. And then we offset by one to get percentage return in the original format. So this is um, viewing the process as a, as a, as in terms of how the price evolves over time. So we have common statistical measures in terms of uh, uh, a sequence of data, a collection of data, right? How we describe the characteristics. Now can you stay arithmetic mean? So this is just summing and divide by the, the number of uh, items. Uh, we have the population variance. So this variance is really calculated based on, we first take the deviation. So this is our mean uh, value. We look at uh, how much deviation we have from the current price and then square it. So the squaring effect um, 
takes away the positive and negative sign. So we look at the, the, all the positive quantities. Then we take the average of these quantities. So various uh, for samples, uh, the only difference is minus by one. This is a more uh, statistical uh, uh, adjustment so that this is uh, unbiased uh, estimates of the, uh, of the population virus. So this is more technical details, but uh, essentially we need to know that there are two ways uh, to calculate virus and one is for samples, one is for population. And to get the standard deviation, again, this is assuming the population uh, standard deviation. We just take the square root, and it, it is always positive. Right? OK. So um, now the, the, the question is, uh, if we have the single period uh, virus, right, single period virus, uh, now how do, we, um, how do we change it to the analyzed term? So, Changing it to uh, the analyzed uh, analyzed uh, term is, is really something we want to do to so that we can compare different products on the annual basis. For example, uh, on the annual basis, this is the risk and this is the return. So, uh, for example, assuming this is our uh, daily virus, uh, daily virus so it could be uh, um, uh, 0 0.01%, for example. And this measures on a daily basis. So if you want to switch from daily basis to an annual basis, we would uh, multiply by uh, usually uh, 252 trading days. So this is 252. Um, this is in the space of virus. And this is multiplied because uh, it does actually underlying assumption that uh, all the uh, daily returns are normally distributed. And that's why this is actually adding uh, two five two uh, individual virus together, so that it's it's, it's the same as multiplying two five two. But uh, uh, in this case, uh, we don't need to go into the the statistical reasoning. Um. Okay. So this is the more widely used form, which is that we have the standard deviation that we just uh, multiply by the square root of two five two. Uh, if you want to, if I look at the daily uh, bar, uh daily standard deviation. So the difference is that this is a linear relationship, right? So linear means that uh, there's a, a corresponding uh, increment, uh, same scale uh, in the in the output. So we have input or output, so their relationship is a line. Mm, but uh, here we are seeing that it's a non-linear relationship. So as t goes bigger, uh, this is actually a curve. So this is uh, this is the difference. Um, lastly, we have the risk adjusted return. So this is really, again, to help us summarize uh, how should we view the products, different products. Um, so here, if we simply divide the return by the risk for the single period uh, 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 case, then this gives us the so-called risk return. Uh, but it's really not taking into account the fact that these products are most of the time measured against a common benchmark. And this benchmark uh, denotes the so-called risk-free rate, RF, risk-free rate. And the reason is really because that um, all the products, uh, if you do not uh, invest in the products, we often assume to go to, uh, for example, the bank deposits or cash accounts and then give you this risk-free rate. So that means that uh, this is will be the risk you will need to you will be able to enjoy if you do not invest in other alternative products, uh, and also means that uh, other alternative products, right? They need to be mm, better in terms of return than uh, than this uh, baseline rate. Uh, however, we need also need to adjust for the fact that so we have the the standard deviation, we have the risk as well. So this is called volatility. This is called risk, and this is also called uh, standard deviation, right? So, different names for the, the term the denominator. Okay, so this gives us a single metric and it's called sharp ratio, right? Quite widely used in, uh, uh, in finance. All right, so that's it for uh, this uh, lecture and um, thanks for watching.